Hello friends, welcome. So today I have in front of me three different color cards that I have cut down to size 2.5 inches by 3.5. I have the craft paper, plain white and black. And the white and the black are 110 pound cardstock. And the uh, craft I believe is 65 pounds. So it's a little thinner, but it's still uh, pretty thick. And so I have here the definition of what an artist trading card is. It's also abbreviated as ATCs. And artists create, trade, and collect art pieces traded around the world. Uh, the only official rule is the measurements must be 2.5 by 3.5 inches. And essentially they should be flat. Here I'm just showing you how I got my inspiration. So I just took a bunch of the kids books and I started looking through uh, their art books that I have here on the shelf uh, just for inspiration and yeah I was looking at a bunch of videos and a bunch of different things and nothing was working for me so I'm like okay well let me look through these books and hopefully I can get lots of inspiration that way and i i did i you know was really inspired by a lot of the art in the book and the shapes and the colors and the patterns and um the proportions these are all different things that you kind of want to look at when you're starting these things i mean i guess any project I, I think about like you know how i'm gonna start it off and here's a one of the so it's like balance pattern proportion rhythm unity right like you want everything to kind of be like together looking good right <laughs> Um, so yes, yeah, so I just was going through all of these different images in the book and trying to get inspired to start my own, uh, little artwork. So I wanted to kind of like uh, do a little bit of role playing and um, imagine myself as this great artist. Um, yeah, when I was younger in high school, I guess I used to, I was much much better uh and i at like art and whatnot and i used to draw and do all kinds of things but like now as i got older i kind of lost the skill and i'm not that great and today was a little bit of a challenge for me to go through uh these cards but i'm doing this for a swap and I wanted to record my process and how I go about things. Um, I've watched a ton of videos and yeah, nothing was working for me. So I just decided to start where I think I know best. And yeah, there's just looking around me and getting inspired by the things I have already in my area. And so that's what I did. I looked at all the different artists and uh, their artwork and children's book and just trying to get inspired by that. I also grabbed my huge book, as you can see here, of stamps. And stamps, I think, is another easy way um, of creating art, right? So you can, like... This is I can show you guys this another day, but it's not I'm not gonna I was just showing you exactly like you know what I kind of keep around. But I also have this little art kit in the kids' area, and I'm like I wanted to use these these uh I don't know what you call them oh yeah, oil like pastel uh colors and again I'm just trying to take out things that I think I would want to use. And I guess that's what they call like mixed media. So you can pretty much use whatever you have on hand. You can use stamps, uh, oil paint, uh, oil pa pastel crayons, uh, markers, just whatever you have, right? Stencils. I couldn't find my stencils. I really wanted to use stencils today, but I could not find them. 
So here I wanted to kind of do a border and this was kind of a fail for me. <laughs> but I still wanted to show it anyway because it is part of the process and it's just me, you know, trial and error here and seeing what works. Um, I do like this black cardstock uh, paper and I like using it with this white gel pen. I was inspired by one of the images in the book here where they had like a double face and it was really like looking like a, a Picasso, right? Like something he would have done with all the geometric shapes and that's what I was kind of going for but um this was a bit of a fail for me <laughs> I don't know it just didn't work out but you'll see a little bit of the process here and then at the end I'll kind of show you how it turned out but yeah it just uh I don't know the trial and error just wasn't working so um <clears throat> I really do like this uh gel pen over the black cardstock it's just so smooth and it comes out really really nice so if you do have that and you want to use it that's also another option um but yeah just use what you have on hand like i said i would have liked to use some stencils uh, i couldn't find my stencils but that's also another good one to use and essentially you want the artist cards to be kind of flat you don't want them to be really bulky because they're going to go in like those basketball card sleeves that's how people normally store them. Um, so yeah, I was just, I don't know, doing different kind of shapes and geomet geometrical shapes here. Um, and this is what I kind of came up with. I mean, it was looking kind of decent. I don't know. It is nothing <laughs> like what I you was capable of before so yeah if you don't want to see this part you can definitely fast forward it i would not be uh upset about that <laughs> because it is kind of painful for me to watch back now looking at this oh my goodness and i zoomed in okay so also, you know, washi tape isn't supposed to be, like, stuck onto the paper, but for some reason, like, I guess, I don't know, it just, like, didn't, I didn't take it off well here, so it kind of damaged the paper. That was also, like, another fail, like I said. So, just trial and error here. And then, these crayons were not looking too good. I thought they were going to come out, like, really bright and vibrant on here. And you can see I'm like still trying. I'm like, okay, well, let me try the yellow. Hmm, that's a little more bright. But it just was not coming out the way I was expecting it to look. So that's why I was just uh, decided to just put this on pause and go back to it later. So I went back to uh, the craft paper. And what I originally had planned to do... Uh, was used as stamps and you can never go wrong with stamps and I know everyone always has stamps and I'm just uh, here uh, shading in the edges with the uh, Tim Holtz distress ink so inking in all those edges to give it that I think more uh, vintage or rusty or distressed obviously says distressed look um so that's what I ended up doing for this uh, process, this process video that you're going to watch now. And I hope you're going to get some good ideas here. Again, this is, this, well, this is my first time doing this myself. So it was a bit of a challenge. And like I said, trial and error. So, um... At the end, I did kind of have a little bit of fun, and I'm not going to lie, I do like the way it turned out, but I think I need more practice, and I would definitely like to be doing some more of these off camera, <laughs> because, uh, yeah, it was kind of brutal to do this the first time on camera, and show, like, you know, everything, <laughs> all my mess ups. <laughs> 
but I guess it's good for people to see too. Um, I also grabbed this stamp. Uh, you, I still left the clearance sticker from uh, that Hobby Lobby haul, but um, I need to take off those stickers. They're like so bright. Yeah, I was trying to take it off there. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm sick of seeing that sticker there. But um, yeah, so I wanted to try this uh, technique where you kind of like put them together and then connect the two together. I thought that looked really good. But then I was like, okay, I don't know what to do more with that because it looked good with just that image on there. And I didn't know what else to add. But an artist card cannot be just like one flat image. I felt like it needed more dimension. So I was just like, okay, I need to do something more, something else. And I still wanted to do that like two uh, car uh, two cards kind of connected, but then like separate. Like, I don't know that effect, what do you call that? But they kind of connect together. You'll kind of see what uh i'm talking about here as the process goes on but i decided to use um these flower stamps that i had here and i'm gonna put one on that end and then another on the other end kind of like to even it out right like we were talking about like symmetry and like proportions and patterns so that's what I'm doing here. I grabbed this butterfly stamp and I would have liked like a really big butterfly stamp, but this is the only, this is the biggest butterfly stamp that I have in my collection right now. So I kind of know what I need now. <laughs> um, I would like to get a bigger butterfly stamp for the future, maybe something like this. But this one actually worked out pretty nicely here. Um, it doesn't look too overbearing or like too big for this uh space so i think it actually was a good size um if i didn't have the flowers on the side then maybe the butterfly could have been bigger but i decided to put the flowers on each side so that way it could kind of fill out the space and right here i'm just coloring in the center with like a black paint marker and yeah that looks a lot better so you can kind of see the effect that i was going for here um so it's like they should go kind of together <laughs> and form together so i'm using these stickers i found this um tim holt sticker pack and i thought this sticker it said a uh, fly away in gold uh gold lettering and I'm just trying to play around with the placement here, as you can see. Um, I thought it was really cute to go with this. So yeah, you can use, uh, I mean, you can layer stamps. You can do multiple different colors um, of stamps. You can ink like I did. And you can also use stickers. So I'm just trying to use multiple different like you know different things different layers on here other than just the one layer of stamp that i had previously done um yeah so i also found this one it says free to fly so i really like that one and i'm just feeling it out looking for more stickers this one says explore and I'm just figuring out where to put that one here. You can watch the whole entire little process here as I figure out where these stickers should go. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I started this in the morning and then I did have to stop for a couple different things. And then, yeah, at this point it's pretty late now and I'm still working on it, so. Just want to give you an idea of how long it takes me to do these things. <laughs> I don't know. Some people knock these things out so quickly. And for me, like, these things just take me so long. Like, I am, I work very, very slow. <laughs> and 
and yeah let me know in the comments if like do you take your time with these things as well like or does this stuff just come like quickly for you so here i have free to fly and then explore below that and then on the other side it says take risk and fly away so yeah i think i found i thought these stickers looked really good up here together <clears throat> so you can just play around with what you have like i said available um i think oh i had these foil like the rub on foil uh stickers or i don't know what you call them just rub ons and i wanted to put something in the middle there but i couldn't figure out what so now i'm just uh testing out these markers and seeing what color will look good um to color in these roses and i was trying this light pink and sometimes you gotta wait a little bit to see the actual color uh, that it's gonna come out and I think I like these two together so I put those off to the side and then I checked that one you see how like the color changes after a little bit so it's good to like do like some swabs on the side like test them before you start um, using them on the actual project because if you don't like the color then you can't really take it off once it's already on there so I chose these colors I think they look really good and I just started using like the lighter color that I chose out of the two um, first in the inside and then I went around it with uh, I shaded it in like the lines and a little bit around it with a darker color you're gonna see that in a little bit after I do all the light pink shades so, I was going around this and I'm like, oh, well, now I gotta go ahead and remove that sticker because that's no good. <laughs> so, yeah, I should have done the coloring first and then played around with the stickers. So, that's uh, another lesson learned there, I guess. <laughs> Shade or color it in first and then layer stickers on, you know? But, again there's no right or wrong just what you whatever you prefer which in this case i should have uh done the coloring first i guess well, i would have preferred to do that but no biggie so now i'm just going in with the darker color there as i said before just shading it in a little bit i really like these um markers the alcohol markers they blend in really nicely and whatever i use here i'll try to link it uh i'll link it in the description box below so if you're interested it should be there and yeah uh this process is just me shading and everything and I'm just going through the colors as you can see and <clears throat> I think I like the effect of when you like you kind of outline it with the darker colors I think it looks really good and it gives it a nice pop so then I took this uh, gold marker I had there and just filled in all those little specks and little uh circles there with the gold and again i should have done what i'm doing now should have filled colored that in before i did the gold and then do the gold after but you know doing everything backwards here that's fine and so now i'm looking at the different colored greens the different shades of greens that i have and just checking, you know, which green I would like to use first. I think it's good to use at least two or three shades to make it look like really, you know, like make it look more alive and pop instead of just using just, you know, one color. 
it's best to try and look for like maybe two to three shades that are like kind of similar so you'll have like one that's a little light then a little sh one shade up and then another shade up if you really have like that big of a variety to choose from and the colors are pretty close so yeah more shades i think uh and the shading that you do it, it really gives it a really nice feel and it looks more realistic um yeah so that's something else you can uh look at and then also like when shading it in i think it's good to always of course use the lighter colors first and then you can always uh go from light to dark and yeah you'll use your darkest color of course last so i just did exactly that i went in and shaded everything with the light green that i chose and then went in with the little darker green that i had there i didn't want to go too dark I kind of want to keep these still like very light so I only chose the two light colors that I had uh, the shades of green that I liked I had like maybe two other darker greens that I just didn't want to use here so <clears throat> and yeah then after this part I'm still really trying to think about what to put in that center, like right underneath the butterfly. I feel like that's just so empty and I didn't know what else to do. You're going to see here what I end up choosing to do with it, which I mm, wasn't too excited about the outcome of that. But yeah. Okay, so I guess it just skipped right to the butterfly being uh, colored in. And I thought I had that clip, but I guess I didn't. So I just shaded in uh, the butterfly there, the monarch butterfly colors. So it's like kind of that bright or yellowy orange with kind of like that brighter orange look. And then I just added the little white specks, as you can see there. And yeah, oh, I'm actually putting the foil in now. So I, I wanted to use those rub-ons that I showed you before. And this is actually my first time using those rub-ons. I've had them for quite some time, but I just haven't tried using them. So trial and error here as well. Uh, Yeah, I really like that effect. I like the way that looks on there. And so... I want to put some more and I end up putting some on both sides but I still wanted something in that center I don't know why it was bugging me so much I honestly should have just left it as is um, but it just felt like it wasn't complete so I felt like it needed more and I had to put something there, so yeah. Uh, just here trying to get that rub on. Like I said, I think the technique for this is doing it from the bottom up. Um, because when I did it from the top down, it didn't come out too well. So if you ever used rub ons or you might be even better than me, obviously, because this is my first time, but... Just um, me using it here, I figured like also to bend the paper uh, while taking it off. So I don't know if you're gonna see that here, but let's see. Yeah, I, I was looking at it there, I'm like, oh, nope, gotta rub that back on there again. So then I flipped it over and kind of like bent the paper back and that worked. So look how pretty that looks. Oh, I love that. So yeah, just little subtle touches. I think that made it look really nice and pop and bring out the, the gold. I just love gold. Uh, gold accents. I normally use it in a lot of my projects. So remember I said I couldn't, I just needed something down there. And I found this butterfly stamp. And I thought it was cute to kind of like fly to the other side of the page. Then I found that one and put it on there, 
but like I said, I wasn't too happy with those. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, I was like, maybe I should have just left that blank, but nothing there in that space, or just put like little speckles of something. I don't know. Then I started coloring this in, and boy, I used a wrong marker. Um, and yeah, it ended up kind of covering so like this is the marker that i used and i was like oh no why did i grab that color it was like a um uh, metallic purple and i don't know why i grabbed that but once i uh put it on the paper i had to commit so i just continued to go with it and yeah that's how it ended up coming out but um, I think I would have, if it was up to me, I would have not done that. <laughs> now, like, you know, obviously after realizing, uh, yeah, but I mean, I guess it's not that bad. Like I said, trial and error. So I still think it, looked, it came out really cute. <laughs> so I went and took my little uh, white gel marker and just started putting a couple little specks all around um and i think that looks really cute i just felt like it needed more like it just wasn't complete just yet so that was like the final touches on it and i think this came out pretty nice so here i'm just trying to play around with stamps some more and yeah you can just use up your stamps i mean put different kind of layers whatever you have um and yeah play around and have fun with it i mean it's nothing <laughs> too serious here it's just you know paper crafts so have fun and if you mess up like i did no big deal just practice some more i definitely will be practicing and doing these uh, again some more uh, so I'm just showing you some of the ones I came up with um, yeah these need some more work okay so in the back of your ATCs you kind of want to like leave your information there right? like who's the artist your name title if you want to title it uh, the date and the number like so let's say you made six of an item like six of the same one in this case I only made two so to be like one of two or two of two and so on so again I'm just using this white gel pen on the black cardstock and I really like that look so I'm just showing you kind of like what your back of your ATC I mean yeah ATC should have um there's no right or wrong I mean you could put as much information as you want back there or as little information as you want I think this is the basics I mean your artist name uh and date and then number of cards you have so this is just a couple more that I did here and you can just see you can also print some out online if you want or you can do it the way I did so <laughs> those were the other cards i just quickly showed them because they were kind of an embarrassment um i would have said my kids did them but yeah no i did that so <laughs> yeah i don't know that's that's how it came out okay well thank you if you came here at the end and uh made it here don't forget to like comment and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate you all and see you soon. Bye.